floating around for a while and I've been thinking about it and I've been going back and forth about it for a bit and I've been talking a lot about uh, um, strikes and the labor movement and things of that sort. But I, didn't, I, I, I wanted to talk about rent strikes, but I wanted to do... You know, I wanted to know what the fuck I'm actually talking about when I when I talk about these sort of things, um, instead of just willy nilly, just coming out and being like, we gotta we gotta strike on rants and stuff like that. So, um, and I know that's been going around, um, especially since April first was coming up, and a lot of people uh, that didn't have a steady source of income or have lost their steady source of income or a majority of uh, their income, you know, uh, full-time performers being one of them, bartenders, uh, anybody in the service industry, people that owned a restaurant, um, things of that sort, all kind of lost um, a majority of, if not all, of their income. Um, so that comes to how are we going to pay bills? What are we going to do about rent? Um, I will say, you know, in, in terms of full disclosure, I, I am not in a rent situation because I am uh, staying with my parents right now, um, going through a life transition. Uh, some of you might know what that life transition actually is, uh, but, it, you know, it's not it's not a super public thing. But but the staying with my parents thing is is, is a public thing and that comes with its own challenges. Um, so I am lucky enough that at this moment, I don't have to worry about rent. Uh, but I did have other bills that I did have to worry about. Um, that some of them I was able to get a, uh, a moratorium on. And we, and we can talk about the differences in that too. Um, in, in what the terms, what like moratoriums are and things of that sort. Um, basically... Well, let's let's start with that. Uh, basically, from from what I've read, the moratoriums are just where you don't gain interest, right? They're just like, okay, uh, if it's like a rent moratorium, they're like, okay, you don't have to pay rent um, this month, but you know you will have to pay the rent. Like if they if they say there's a rent moratorium for April and May, and you don't have to pay anything till June, well, um, in June you will have to back pay that rent. Um, you know, eviction moratoriums essentially mean that same thing. So, you know, if you can't pay in April or May or whatever, um, you will eventually have to pay that back. Um, so there is back pay involved in these moratoriums. Same thing with the mortgage moratoriums. Um, you know, and I don't think this is the, this is the right way to kind of move forward. What, what I think a lot of people are asking for and a lot of people think is the right thing to do is a total freeze on rent, mortgages, debts, things of that sort. Um, so let's let's talk about what this rent strike is because there are places that aren't doing any of this. They're not doing moratoriums. They're not even thinking about freezes, um, right? So a rent strike is um, employed against large landlords when a group of tenants refuse to pay their rent in mass so it's got to be all of the all of the people all of the tenants uh living under you know under a a uh, housing institution uh an apartment a townhouse uh you know even if it's a group living situation if everybody in that group living situation uh, you know, if your landlord owns multiple houses and things of that sort, if everybody, um, you know, under this landlord decides, hey, we're not going to we're not going to pay rent. We don't think it's fair. We don't have an income. This situation is, you know, um, not something that we asked for. It's not something that we created. So it has to be everybody involved. Now, there are some risks in doing this. Um, the risks are eviction. And reduction in credit scores. That second one, uh, probably to a lot of people in my generation, in the millennial generation, could give a shit less. Um, and I'm not, I'm not just kind of saying that, big, but, but realistically, like, who gives a shit about our credit scores when we can't feed our families or pay our, um, pay our bills, uh, you know, take care of the important things that we need to take care of right now um you know so who gives a shit about your credit score the eviction thing is probably something that is uh of more concern to um 
people is because this is the middle of a pandemic and if people are going to be evicted, uh, that seems kind of crazy. And there are states that are uh, preventing to do that. That, that don't, you know, that they're basically like, you can't evict people right now. Um, evictions are out of the question. So don't even, don't even like, and not only that, but the courts aren't operating. And most municipal courts do see landlord tenant debates. So, you know, the courts aren't operating. So if somebody doesn't pay their rent in April because they legitimately can't because they've lost the majority of their income or all of their income, um, and it's between, you know, paying rent and eating food, you know, what court is going to be like, oh, yeah, you got to back pay that off or you got to, well, an unjust court would do something like that, which, you know, there's plenty of those. Um, so I know a lot of people would sit there and be like, well, Chris, this is crazy. Like, what an insane idea. This will never work. First of all, people say that about strikes all the time. People say that strikes don't work all the time. That that they're that they're over the top, they're insane, um, they're they're hostage situations, whatever the fuck, whatever fuck propaganda you have against labor organization and and strikes, um, you know you're just wrong because strikes have been proven to work in the labor movement. Uh, they have been a a a source of you know achieving um, basic human rights when basic human rights have been uh, infringed upon, especially in the workplace or possibly in a tenant situation. Um, And rent strikes have actually worked. There have been several rent strikes that have taken place in Europe, Africa, and North America, dating all the way back to the 1880s. Uh, Most of them them run by women, actually. Uh, So that I thought was kind of cool. You know, one of them in... The UK uh, ran for like 14 months. It was 14 months of rent strikes that was organized by these women that were basically, um, you know, and this is this is late 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, this is not late. This is this is the 70s is when this was, uh, you know, and and basically um, their their rents were going up by a pound a day. And, uh, and they were like, no, we're not going to, that's kind of crazy. We can't do, you can't do that to us. Uh, and they, they held a rent strike and because everybody was involved because the entire building was involved and all of the tenants supported each other, um, and all of the tenants had each other's backs, it was a lot harder for the landlord to evict everybody from the building because, you know, that is a, that is a risk on the landlord's part. Because, you know, if let's say that he does that and let's say it's 100 tenants that he evicts out of his apartments. Now he has to fill in another 100 tenants to fill up that apartment to make sure that he has money for the next month, which, you know, he's he hasn't received that money in the first place or he or she. They, um, you know, so. At that point, it becomes a risk for the for the landlord themselves uh, when all of the tenants are standing in solidarity and, you know, it's a lot easier, it's a lot easier to, um, evict and get rid of one or two people, uh, rather than, you know, an entire building. So if the entire building, if the entire tenants, um, are, are going to stand, uh, together, then this thing works. And that's, that's realistically the only way a rent strike is going to work. So if you're trying to think of whether you want to implement a rent strike um, in your building for the months going forward, which a lot of people are doing right now. A lot of people have basically said, we can't pay April. I mean, what are we going to do? We don't have a job. Uh, We don't have income. And there's no way to make an income because there's no jobs to make an income because because of the coronavirus. So, you know, some people can work from home some people can't so everybody needs to you know be aware of what's going on and um you know that's one thing that I feel like by by being in the current situation that I'm in that I that I don't feel like I have that I don't feel like I have this solidarity with the building that I live in I don't know who my neighbors are I was never really encouraged like I lived here boy the last time I really lived here was in my early 20s so so you know 
I was like 22, 23, and I didn't really get to know my neighbors. Um, there were a couple of old ladies that I got to know a little bit. Um, that's a good thing that happens. Uh, older women, uh, like I'm talking about like golden girls uh, age, um, you know, like there, there are some Blanches. There's some Blanches that live in this building for sure. Uh, I've met them. I've talked to them. They hit on me awkwardly and then I don't know what to do and I just uh, uh, giggle and uh, run into the elevator. That's really all I could do. Um, but, you know, I, there was really no encouragement of, of um, getting to know the neighbors, getting to know who's on your floor or, or any of that sort of stuff. Everybody kind of keeps to themselves. And, you know, in almost every single neighborhood that I've lived in, that seems to be the mentality here. Um, that, that, that's not really the mentality that I grew up with either. Like when I was in India, that was not the mentality. I knew fucking everybody that lived in my building in India. And they all knew me. So, like, it was much harder for me to get away with shit. Because <laughs> they all knew my mom. They all knew my mom, you know. Uh, but, like, here, it's just, like, neighbors aren't really encouraged to talk to each other. Everybody kind of is supposed to keep within their fucking white picket fence. And um, and, and that, that in and of itself, um, you know discourages that community it discourages solidarity it takes away from the strength that you really have and i'm not saying you're going to be best friends with you know with with your next door neighbor you might not be you might be i don't i don't know maybe you know but um but that's part of it you should know who's here so if you go to your neighbors and they go oh chris look uh, you're you're home you're usually not home for this long and they go oh yeah i lost you know um basically two and a half months worth of work um and they go oh my god that's ridiculous you, why don't you come over and have some dinner with us you know we'll, we'll let's talk about it let's, maybe we'll come up with an idea um you know i i heard uh, you know mrs giannis down the down the she needs some help maybe she can you know she can you can earn a little scratch maybe doing doing some groceries or something for her or something you know and then the community starts to build um from there, so when it comes down to it, and, and they go, how? What are you going to do about rent? What are you going to do? And I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. And they go, well, we got to. I wonder how many other people in the building are facing the same. And then it builds and builds, and now you have a bunch of people that are like, yeah, you know what? We're all kind of caught in the same bullshit. Or if we're not caught in the same bullshit, we know enough people that are that we should stick together with them. Um, <clears throat> the second aspect of this, once the the tenants come into solidarity. And they and they say, you know, this is not a system we created, but we are victims of it. Um, and we will we we don't think that it's fair that we have to, uh, you know, pay rents and things of that sort. The, the Cheesecake Factory couldn't afford its rent. And the landlords of the Cheesecake Factory was like, yeah, don't worry about it. Hey, we got you covered for the next couple months, you know, but but they're not doing that for us. They're not doing that for small businesses. Right. These bigger um bigger sort of real estate companies uh, are, are just, they're just not giving a shit um, about us. The second aspect of this, though, is getting the landlords themselves to be on the tenant side. Um, because as much as we're looking for rent freezes and rent forgiveness, um, I think the landlord's should probably look for mortgage freezes and mortgage forgiveness that their mortgages aren't extended and they don't have to do this back pay bullshit. Um, so if the landlords can be on the tenant side, when there's a rent strike going on in solidarity, the landlords could run a mortgage strike as well. So, uh, that, that is something that I think, um, is probably a necessity that, um, would really make a, a pretty large impact, uh, f uh, you know, to, to kind of show the federal government about where we stand as people and where we stand um, when we stand together. I lost my pen. Ha, ah, back. Um, but, you know, really what we have in the United States uh, is a pause. That's what we have. We hit the pause button on rent. Um, we didn't really get, we didn't really freeze it. We didn't really put a moratorium on it or any of that sort of stuff. We just hit the pause button. 
if you can't pay, it's fine. Pay us back later. Um, and, you know, we, we got that. And, and the reason for that is because we got that $1,200. You know, a lot of people today got that $1,200 into, uh, into their accounts. Um, I did not. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't make, I don't make uh, that much money. Um, so I'm sure that they don't count me as a real person. Uh, which means that they don't have to give me or anybody else that is, that is in my position um, where they don't make a specific amount of money. Uh, so they are not considered a, uh, you know, they're just not considered, uh, you know, someone that should be able to receive this sort of a stimulus. And so we get this one-time check, and that's supposed to cover everything. You know, so, oh, you did, weren't able to pay your rent in April. That's okay. You got this one check. This one check should cover you for, what, like a year? Something like that. What are people making these days? The government, they, they're so out of touch that they're like 1200 bucks. Perfect. Perfect. That'll get them through maybe 18, that'll get them through the 18 months, Right. Because I've never set foot into a real grocery store um, in about seven years. And, uh, and I figure, you know, it, things are looking good for me. Things have to be looking good out there. So, you know, what's food cost? 38 cents? I don't know. I'm not really sure. No, they have no idea. So they're like twelve hundred bucks. That should kick. That that kills it. We're killing it. We're killing it. They can pay their rent and their bills. They, we don't need to freeze anything. You know, we've we've got the economy on lock, baby. And it's very short sighted, <laughs> to say the least. It's super short sighted. Um, because here's the thing: uh, when this quarantine situation comes to a close whenever it does a lot of people are saying june there are some people that are saying july other people are saying 18 months there are some people that are saying by the end of this month um you know uh, it'll still take average people another month or two before they can get back to just even right i'm not talking about where they're where they're back to having a surplus of things i'm you know, where, where they feel like they can go out and, uh, and have a, a drink at a bar or, or spend a little extra money on a, uh, you know, on a, on a show or a movie or something along those lines. Um, I'm talking about just getting back to even, where they can pay their bills, where they can pay for food, put gas in their car, uh, you know, take care of their utility bills, things of that sort. That's a month to two months just to work their way back up to that. Now, you add this fake stimulus check that isn't going to make a dent in fucking anything, right? It's, it's, it's basically like, uh, like, like throwing a feather at an airplane in order to try to break the hull. You're throwing a feather and it's like, oh, no. That's, that's essentially what that $1,200, it's just gone, it's gone, oh no, it's gone. It's disappeared. It's not going to do anything because when all this is over, there's still debt to be paid back on top of the debt that we were already paying back, right? And if it's going to take a month or two just without all the additional debt burdens that are going to come out of this, this quarantine situation... Um, that's a month or month or two to, to do that my, is, is my estimate. There's going to be some people that are probably going to have, it might take them longer. Um, but if you add all these back payments to it, it's going to take a whole lot longer. And who's going to suffer is small businesses, individuals, sole proprietorships, you know, the mom and pop shops who are already suffering to begin with, because they also, I mean, you could literally... Uh, replace the word tenant with small business owners and it's the same situation it's the same situation I mean that's kind of what's happening with my car payments right now 
my car payments, uh, you know, I called them and I basically said, hey, I'm, I'm in this situation where, you know, I've lost v virtually all of my income. Um, and they said, well, we can put a moratorium on your payments. I said, okay, that's fine. What does that mean? And they said, well, your, your payments, you don't have to make a payment for three months. There's going to be no interest charge, nothing. Um, and I was like, okay, so what does that mean? What's the catch here? And they're like, well, it just means that, um, you know, you have to pay it off in the same amount of time. We, there, there's no like extended three months. Like they didn't shift my timeline. And I was like, is that it? That's like the only option that I have. It's either I have to make the payments, which I can't afford to do. Um, or I, I have to essentially figure out these three month back payments. They're like, yeah, but you don't have to worry about that until the, until the very end of your payment anyway. And I was like, okay, I mean, that kind of seems like I don't really have an option here. So I have to take that. And they're like, yeah, but you don't have to worry about it till the end. You know, so, and again, I consider myself lucky in that term. I wonder how many people don't have that kind of luxury um, where, where perhaps they have a car payment that, that doesn't do that. Perhaps they have a car payment that defers their payment for three months, but at the once that those payments restart, their minimum payment is now gone up in order to account for the three months of deference. That's another option that they... I mean, these are all really bad ideas. These are not how you stimulate the economy, but they're not trying to stimulate our economy. This is, once again, we go back to the proof of there's two different kinds of economies. There's the economy for the rich and the economy for the rest of us, the working class people. Um, they don't give a shit about us. I mean, they're going to funnel more money, you know, up at the top anyway. And this is and, and, and look, things were difficult as it is, right? Like things were already kind of pretty difficult. Like pre-COVID, 78 percent of people were living paycheck to paycheck. Fifty eight couldn't were, uh, afford a uh, five hundred dollar emergency. I mean, I'm, I'm part of that statistic for sure. You know, I, I basically, when I would, you know, full, as a full-time touring performer, whatever I make was going into paying those bills, paying my rent, paying my um, whatever utilities I had, paying off my car, paying gas, groceries, things of that sort. And, you know, whatever little I had left was, uh, was awesome. It was great. I was like, oh, my God, I, may, I might be able to go see my friend's performance this month at the, at the brewery or whatever. You know, I might be able to have a beer at a at an open mic or something. Um, you know, now now that we are in this post COVID world, um, twenty percent of people have lost a uh, significant portion of their income, if not all. And unemployment is heading to thirty percent, which is Great Depression numbers. Um, you know, so this is this is the situation that we're in. This is the situation America's in. Other countries are handling, um, you know, handling this situation a lot differently. They are putting in um, additional social programs into place to protect their uh, working class people. You know, like in Europe, a lot of countries are offering 70 to 80 to 90 percent of your income, um, you know, so you know, th there are some countries even looking at a permanent UBI situation. Um, Venezuela, for example, too. Venezuela, which uh, a lot of people are like, oh, fucking communist bullshit. Well, here, they're doing a rent freeze for six months. They have a program to make sure that uh, 7 million families get groceries. During this pandemic, um, they are implementing additional social protections and making sure that their citizens are taken care of over, you know, uh, corporate profits. And not only is it during this pandemic, uh, but it's also when they're receiving sanctions from the United States. Illegal sanctions from the United States are being put upon Venezuela and Nicolas Maduro has still taken care of his people. And he's still blacklisted and badmouthed by a country that has done fucking nothing by the way, nothing to take care of its people. They chastise countries that do. 
you know, they make fun of them. They they literally, which is what they did for the Venezuela, they put a hit for $15 million out on Nicolas Maduro. <laughs> and this guy just put a six-month rent freeze. We're not even thinking about that right now. Some people are not. Uh, some people are not thinking about that. A majority of the American leadership is not thinking about that. There are some people that are, though. Um, the Lan There's a Lansing Tenant Union being formed. Uh, Brandon Betts, who has been a guest on uh, my podcast, Taboo Table Talk, I uh, highly recommend you listen to that episode. Um, the I think the plan, right, I'm going to try to reach out to Brandon again to get him back on the podcast to kind of talk about you know, how, how Lansing has dealt with this situation. Um, Brandon um, is part of the Lansing Tenant Union because he's a rent payer in Lansing, Michigan. Oh, God, I just spilled coffee <laughs> all over myself. <laughs> Good job, Chris. Great job. Uh, anyway, Brandon Brandon is part of the, the, the Tenants uh, Union, the uh, Lansing Tenant Union, um, and, uh, you know, he sees this as a worthwhile, valuable thing to do, um, and the point of the Lansing Tenant Union is to build power through sol solidarity among all of the tenants in Lansing, Michigan. That's, that's the whole, that's the whole point. Again, it's building solidarity, so all, uh, there, there's a bunch of people, a bunch of tenants all across the city of Lansing that are like, hey, we're in a dire situation, and we really need the city and the landlord's in the city to be um, understanding and sympathetic to our situation. Um, and this is a quote, the uh, more power to fight for their rights when they stand together. And that's what we have to do. We, ha we all have to stand together. So if you see any sort of uh, building or tenants that are saying, hey, we're trying to implement a rent strike, um, you know, stand with them because we're all kind of going through this shit together. This is not the time for you to come out and and scream hand out. So you're looking for no, we're 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 scared, and we're kind of going through some tough shit. And don't pretend like you're not by screaming scared, uh, hand out socialism, whatever the fuck. Uh, who gives a shit? Are you gonna help out your fellow man? That's the bigger question here. And stand with them. The fight really is for. Um, the, the rent freeze, not not just the uh, you know the the suspension, um, and, and uh, the moratoriums that we uh, that we've that you know that that have been pitifully granted to us because they're giving us a twelve hundred dollar check, one twelve hundred dollar check, which for most people is virtually their bills for the entire month. Um, so you basically covered one month without, but then there's groceries, there's, you know, like, uh, there's a bunch of other things that pop up, you know. So, um, that's really what this is for. Um, but the reason why they want this moratorium over the freezes where, you know, nobody pays rent and there's no worry about back pay, there's no worry about interest or accumulations or any of that sort of stuff. It's just, okay, you know what? We're just not going to do rent uh, for small businesses and tenants this month. That's it. Uh, don't worry about it. There's a couple people that are doing that. There's a few landlords that are taking it upon themselves um, to do that. And, you know, more landlords should be encouraged to do that sort of stuff. And again, it, when, when they kind of do, when they kind of go up against that, then we can also have a mortgage strike along with the same thing. But the reason why they want that, that back pay and, you know, the liens and all, because America's run on a debt economy. We're run on the fact that we're all in debt to big banks. We're all in debt to the financial sector. You know, they've given out these loans and now we have to pay them back in order to keep the banks rolling and you know somehow somebody moves money from here to here and in that move there's more money made and there's an interest level here and somehow some the banks are making more money than anybody can ever imagine right that's how the rules of this sort of shit works and it's very stupid and doesn't make any fucking sense it makes sense if you look at uh, look at it and you know as possibly cheating the american people <laughs> but that's what it is it's a debt economy 
We need to be in debt in order to keep the economy moving. And what this situation is proving now is that that system, when you run an economy on debt, when you run an economy whose debt is, debt is also funding wars that causes the death of other people, that economy has failed. It has failed. So, Brand is not the only one doing this, by the way. You also have Shama Savant in Seattle. Uh, both of them are Socialist City Council members. Um, you know, she's fighting for a rent freeze in Seattle right now. Um, and not just Seattle, but for the entire state of Washington. Um, and this is one of the things that she points out is this debt economy. Uh, the reason why debt is so important to these people is because it provides an opportunity for parasitic capitalistic companies to create a system of oppression and slavery. <sighs> That's a lot. <laughs> but it does. It, it, you know, they, they kind of look at these disasters um, and they put more financial stresses and more financial uh, pressures on average working class citizens uh, and poor people like me and probably a lot of you watching out there. And, um, and you know, eventually we have to, we, we end up going into these debt crises and, uh, uh, you know, and, and it gives them an opportunity to be like, oh, do you want to come out of debt? Then here's some things that we're going to put into place that are going to definitely benefit us that'll help you get out of debt. You know, they did that with, with um, you know, the destruction of the public schools in New Orleans by putting in charter schools and, um, really displacing communities of color by doing that. Um, and and they'll, they'll frame it as, oh, well, we're helping. We're helping the community and, you know, we're, we're, we're bringing people together when in reality that it doesn't. Um, what it does is it creates, a, 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 you know, it's just more opportunities for them to come in and control different neighborhoods, control different aspects of your community. Uh, so that people don't have the, the resources and, and um, know how to fight back against that. Now, Shama Savant in Seattle did win. She banned evictions um, during the colder months. She basically said no evictions during the colder months, and she won, right? Um, and, um, and she's saying that, you know, these rent freezes, it, it's basically the same kind of principle, is that the situation and the conditions that we are in right now are you know uh we're looking at we're, we're looking at a possible humanitarian crisis uh where you know if people can't pay back these these you know re back rents and stuff like that what's going to happen it, you're probably going to look at a, a, a mass amount of evictions you're going to look at eviction cases you're going to look at uh sheriffs coming out and taking people out of their homes and all of that sort of stuff so and this is not just her saying that and this is the economic projections are bad because the system is too top heavy. That's really it. You know, you have people from the Fed that are like, well, we really got to save the banks. We really got to buffer the banks. I mean, sure, the banks are making trillions and trillions of dollars. And then we also made trillions and trillions of dollars up out of thin air and then funneled it into the banking system, which they spent through because they're like a 12 year old with a, you know, a trust fund account. And they don't really know what money management actually looks like. And now they're blaming the American people for it. But we need to bail them out. We need to put more money into it uh, more aggressively. That's what the Fed is saying. The, basically, the economy is run by people who play Jenga, uh, but the first thing they do is remove the, the strip from the very bottom part. And then when it all topples, they're like, how'd that happen? It's so crazy. I was trying to protect a penthouse situation, and all of a sudden, it's all gone. How did that even happen? Maybe we should build the top part. Maybe we should just build the top part up again. Do you think that's... Can we just build the top part up again and pretend I... Pretend that that part didn't happen where I just d completely removed the bottom foundation, the, the base and the foundation that things should be built from, you know, like how logic dictates things are built. Maybe maybe we can just pretend that it doesn't exist and it's just can we float. Is there a floating mechanism for the Jenga? That's how they look at the economy. Now, um. Governor Jay Inslee, who some people might remember as presidential candidate Jay Inslee, um, 
who there was a bunch of people that liked him. He had some things to say about um, environmentalism that were pretty solid. He was kind of became like the climate change um, candidate. And Jay Inslee has not responded to Shama Savant at all. Uh, same thing with, uh, you know, Michigan as well. Uh, let's talk, Governor Cuomo is, the, you know, the New York governor. We talked about him yesterday. Uh, governor Cuomo has put moratoriums on evictions and rent, but, you know, that's because he kind of had to. It was a gov- gubernatorial l- loophole that when your state goes into a state of emergency, you have to put those measures in place. That's sort of a requirement. Um, but he's not really worried about putting freezes in place. He's not really worried about people uh, not being able to afford to pay rent or you know, pay, pay back rent or any of that sort of stuff when we come out of this, this situation. What he's cur- worried about is uh, making sure rich people in New York are taken care of so that they, can, they will come back to the state of New York um, and you know, vacation in the Finger Lakes for three weeks. And that's who he caters to. He caters to those tourists because they have money and they'll donate to his campaign and help him win again so he can fuck over hospital workers and poor people. Yay, Cuomo. But that's what the system is doing, too. The system is banking on the fact that we're all going to be scared. Um, And they'll try to exploit that fear. They'll be that parasite uh, that will exploit that fear. Um, and pit us against each other that oh somebody's not going to pay their rent well they're just lazy look we gave them we gave them money what do they want what do they want how much more do they want we have to save money for the banks who i mean there's a guy that we hire to wax the bull and then we hire a separate person to wax just the testicles of the bull because that's really important the shine from the testicles is really what shows you the strength of wall street and, uh, and, you know, that's uh, just to get the, the products, the maintenance, that's a trillion and a half dollars alone just for the bull. And then we have all those bankers that destroyed America in 2008 that we have to take care of and not put in prison, you know, and that takes a lot of money. So, you know, maybe maybe renters should think about that fucking sad and pathetic (laughs) is what they are thank you so much for checking out this video if you enjoyed this content please give it a like and a subscribe and a share share it out with your friends your enemies whoever you think would enjoy content like this i'm going to be putting out videos like this every single day so make sure you are subscribed to the channel uh, and make sure you hit that bell so you get all the alerts from all the videos that i put out there uh and uh and if you if you have the means to uh please consider making a a donation i know we are all in tough times but if you if you can uh you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can check out various different ways of becoming a sustaining member or just make a one-time donation. Uh, While you're on my website, you can also check out all of my past comedy albums, which are available on all of your favorite streaming and uh, downloading websites, if that's that's if that's a way that you can you say that. Uh, (laughs) But they're also available on Bandcamp, which uh, right now is giving the most back to artists. uh, But also on my Bandcamp, they are all available for a pay what you want if you would like to enjoy some live stand-up comedy albums from me and you don't have the means if you're in tough times that's totally fine you can download it for free go ahead and get it for free and enjoy it uh or if you do and if you want somebody else to enjoy it you can get it to them as a gift uh that's also a, a recommended thing uh but most importantly thank you guys for tuning into this video um, thank you guys for, for all the people that have already donated, that have already become patrons. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you on the road. Thank you, guys.